He's Mike Krzyzewski, the Duke head coach, kind enough to join us. Coach, what time did you get to bed last night? Uh, about five thirty, and uh, but we, you know, we ended up after the game watching the game with our families, uh, the families of the staff, my, my family, and uh, some of the support staff, and and uh, it was good just to let me relive an amazing night. And you know, you didn't get out of the gym till about one in the morning, so uh, we're still in Indy. Uh, you know, I'm, doing uh, radio and TV for all the people who didn't pick us in their brackets. And uh, just, uh, you weren't, you didn't pick us, right? No, I, I, one of the few. That's why I felt very passionate. It was emotional last night. And I said, look, I, I had a first class seat on the bandwagon at Duke because I uh, was one of the few who said, Duke can shock the world. Kentucky will not win the national championship. And I'm on record as saying that. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you go on record about stuff. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, my guys, what a great game, first of all. The, uh, you know, Wisconsin, we felt, uh, may be the best team in the country you know, with the experience, talent, and coaching that they had. And obviously, they had that type of year. And, uh, and they, you know, they had us on the ropes with a nine point lead. And, uh, we were in foul trouble, and our bench came through for us. Grayson Allen was spectacular. Uh, Matt Jones and Emil Jefferson, although Matt starts, uh, they only scored, those two kids only scored two points, but their defense on Decker and Kaminsky uh, the last 10 minutes of the game was fantastic. And then our freshman guard in the pick and you know, the ball screen stuff was as good as you can get. Mm-hmm. Well, you had to hit jumpers, and you hit jumpers. Uh, and, and I thought full-court pressure to start, I thought you were fi- – I didn't know if the game plan was to be more physical, or is that just the style that you've been trying to teach to these kids? Well, in the, in, especially in the tournament, we've been trying to drive the ball more. So that adds the physicality. And then defensively, we've tried different points of pickup throughout a game and sometimes, like last night, some different defenses, even if it's just for a little bit, just to, you know, because of our, you know, we're, still, we're a young team and we are playing an older team just to, you know, spar with them a little bit, you know, each round maybe do a little bit something different. So they don't, usually a veteran team, if it gets into a rhythm, you, you've got a hard time getting them out of their rhythm, rhythm and, and, uh, we are able to do that enough, just enough, you know, to uh, pull out a hard-fought win. Uh, but it, it's, it was a heck of a game. It was just a, a great, great basketball game. And, and the venue is absolutely spectacular. Uh, the Lucas Oil in, in, in Indianapolis, they, it, it's, as, it's as beautiful a setting as I've ever seen, you know, for a Final Four. When did your opinion on freshmen change in your uh, coaching career? Well, I've always liked freshmen. I liked them better when they stayed. Uh, <laughs> uh, you liked them better so my, as sophomores. <laughs> yes. I mean, I've always loved freshmen, but uh, uh, I actually like sophomores even better. And seniors, I embraced. But uh, How many freshmen you know, do you think – how many sophomores will you have next year? I have no idea. I don't know, and we'll. But whoever, whatever happens, as long as it's in the best interests of the kids, then we'll we'll be fine. And uh, but uh, when one and done started, we it took us a few years to start recruiting those. When I say those players, they're usually in the, when kids could go out of high school. There were anywhere from five to. 12 that would consider it and might be good enough to go right out of high school. And we never recruited those guys. You know, one guy, one exception was Kobe Bryant. And, uh, and, and then we, but we didn't have to play against them either. And then after a few years, when one of them came in, we said, okay, what's, if we're, if there's any kid out there that fits the profile of academics, character, and, Obviously, that have talent that would fit the Duke our Duke profile. 
let's go after them and see how, you know, and again, nothing's promised because a kid may not go after one year either. Mm-hmm. You know, to, uh, so we started that, and there are more and more kids who fit the profile, like the four kids we have in a freshman class are really good students, unbelievable kids. They love Duke, and, you know, all, all of them have to make decisions as they move along as to, you know, when is the best time for them uh, to enter uh, the NBA. Uh, and uh, But we, we can handle that. And, you know, Dan, that's happening not just with uh, athletes, but there are a lot of students who don't complete four years now because after a couple of years, they – some of them are so smart and they get involved in all these different things business wise that that can happen and and they leave so I think it's more of a trend it's not just an athletic trend well, I hope that uh, Grayson stays because America has to have a duke player they don't like, and he seems like he'd be the no i think a, the I poster think a child. lot of people will i think a lot of people will like Grayson allen and uh and again if you're not a Duke fan, you're not going to like him. But, no, Grayson will be with us. And, well, I saw him in the slam and, dunk contest. So I'm like, in, in uh, the McDonald's All-American slam yeah. dunk contest, I was thinking, you know, whatever happened to that kid? Then all of a sudden he comes off the bench, and I'm going, oh, my God. You know, he had the dunk yeah. in the previous game against Michigan State, and I go, oh, I've seen that before. But uh, that was huge, huge last night performance. Well, he, yeah, without him, w- there's no way we would have won. He, he really – turned the game around for us because we're nine points down and and he scored eight yeah. straight points and he made an amazing steal or, or we caused the turnover where he just threw his body <laughs> had a loose ball and uh and you know just turned everything around while matt jones and emil jefferson were really playing outstanding defense on their two best players decker and kaminsky uh, this morning, are you closer or further from retirement? Well, I'm always closer to retirement because I keep getting older. I mean, how now, – now, just think of your question. Yeah. I mean, what – do I have the ability to get in a hot tub time machine and go back in time or <laughs> – No, 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 or, but you're being literal. Well, I'm going to be – you're being literal with it instead of because you know you're you're you have you just want a title which says hey I'm I'm energized or I'm drained or man I I can't I, I can see this I can go out as a winner I want to continue to do this I I don't I don't know I know obviously you don't have you know 20 more years left coaching but no no but I'm not close to you know when I say well, I mean I'll be back next year and I would think for a few more years but good uh, you know. But just because we won, I'm not going to get, get out of it. Like, you know, like, uh, yeah, I'm still coaching, going to coach the U.S. in the, in the Olympics in 2016. And, and, uh, uh, and this team really has been a joy. I mean, I, I've loved this team. And when it was last night, I loved this team. And they were the closest team that I've coached. They're like brothers, and every day, you know, it's not, I'm not exaggerating. Every day, they were a joy to coach. Well, congrats. Kind of like every, kind of like every interview, every conversation we have. You know, it's, it's a joy. It's a joy. Look forward to it. But I make it to the Final Four every year, Coach. You know, do you win the Final Four every year? Not every year. See? But in my mind, Somebody I do. Else. Somebody will throw that out to you and, and say that you're losing in the Final Four is like a monkey on your back or something. If you want to yeah. ask me, am I closer or further uh, to retirement, you can ask me that question if you'd like. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to even know the answer. For me, I want you to be everlasting. I want you to be there all the time. Like you have been so far in my life. You've always been there, man. Thank you. I was there at Army for you, Coach. No, I know. Like, you have had my back Yes, like crazy. And I said, pass uh, up the Lakers, Coach. Do not do it. Don't do it. And you listened to me. I did. Yep. And, you know, I don't want to do this publicly, but we'll, we'll talk later about the future, all right? And, and I'll, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. I, I want you to keep coaching. I want you to keep coaching a little bit longer. Um, 
and maybe maybe coach the Cavs uh, for a year, just one year. <laughs> not gonna, that's one thing. I'm, You're not doing that. Won't, there yeah. won't be any pro gigs. But, uh, uh, yeah. If you get uh, the chance, I know that's something you you'd mentioned earlier this year. When you won the national title, you'd send the tie of uh, the national title game to uh, to me. And I look, I'd love to have it. It'd be nice to have it in the man cave. <laughs> All right. Well, you look out for that for the next 30 days, all right? All right. I appreciate yeah. that. That's nice. A nice. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wear the tie on Football Night in America during the football season, and I will slap the desk when I get ready to do the highlights on Football Night in America wearing your Duke tie. 